Welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're going to check out a plugin, Tal Uno LX. It's a Juno 60 emulation. It's really awesome. Let's check it out. So when you first pull it up, it sounds like this, which is a pretty thick saw and um, square wave sub oscillator sound. Let's flip on the VCA envelope. Now it's going to use the ADSR. And let's mess around with the arpeggiator, one of the great functions of the original Juno. And I'll just set it to something like this. And I'll put on the hold. And I can have both hands free here. So next I'm going to put the modulation from the LFO section onto the filter. So I'm turning up the mod amount and I'm going to turn down the frequency. I'm going to change the, the speed of this. Or we could remove that and just use the envelope function. And now the uh, filter is following the ADSR shape. So let's turn down this ADSR. That's a pretty good sound. We're not even using the main oscillator yet. Let's turn on the main oscillator. I can adjust the pulse width modulation. When it's switched to manual, I'll turn down the sub oscillator. All right, but let's put, turn those all on, turn that up again, because it sounds great. Put in a little bit of noise. We turn up the release with a very short decay time like this. It kind of sounds like reverb. And the voice amount actually affects that. So if we have this on one, this release doesn't do much because the next note is canceling that. But we have this up to 12, it's a pretty dense sort of reverb effect. Versus no release. So the real fun with this plugin comes when you switch on the chorus, which is just such a classic effect and 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 just simply massive. So here we go. Arpeggiator on, chorus one on. And here's chorus two. It's more pitch modulation. And you can have them both on. And so over the past week or so that I've owned this, I've spent hours probably just messing around with this. It's such a fun plugin to play with, such a classic sound. You know, you've heard Juno on millions of records. Um, it's it's great for making retro wave, synth wave sort of stuff, but also like anything that has like a thick bass line. As you can uh, you can make some really awesome things with this. I'm gonna go over to some of my presets that I've made over the past week or so. So really thick, deep bass. A lot of these ones are using the arpeggiator. It, so much expression comes from the uh, setting the decay time here or changing the uh, the filter amount. So this is a, a high arp. I have this on the random mode for the arpeggiator.
change the range of this arpeggiator. I love doing stuff like that. So here's the uh, a noise filler sort of thing. It's sort of like a pulsing noise. And I'm using the keyboard that the note that I choose here actually changes the filter amount to some degree using this uh, slider here, the key, key B. When this is off, it's pretty much exactly the same no matter which key I, I hit, which octave. But with this on, it starts out, it starts out more open um, on the higher notes. So if you get this plugin, you gotta mess around with the decay time, the filters, um, like the LFO and everything is really basic on this because it's based on a really old synth. If you get into automation, you can really make some expressive and 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 great sounding effects. So I'm gonna go back to the factory default setting and we'll look at the different sections. Starting up at the top, there's the DCO, the digital oscillator. We can turn on the different oscillators here when they're all off, you get no sound. Uh, we can turn off the noise though, if you just want a noise layer. The main oscillator is of a square wave. And so you can see here on the, the waveform is actually a square, um, but not a completely digital square. Um, it does have a bit of a curve and there's some fluctuations in that. Um, we can use the the manual setting to change the pulse width. Which makes it more asymmetric and also really thins out the sound. You can see in the uh, frequency spectrum that there's these uh, kind of notches that shift. We can link this pulse width control to the LFO, which is always going to use a triangle shape. So. Um, the settings here are going to be ignored for the pulse width. That's just because the original um, Juno was like that. We're changing the amount of pulse width modulation, and we can choose the rate by using this. We can set this to free or to follow the uh, project tempo. So that can add a lot of thickness, especially when we add in the sub oscillator. And the saw wave. So the LFO slider here is actually for pitch. So this will add in pitch modulation. And that one actually does follow these other uh, LFO shapes. So I could put this on saw wave. And this has a range of six, uh, six semitones. And rectangle shape. Which is pretty cool, that's a cool effect. And there's random. And so you could also change the the pulse width control to follow the ADSR. And so we just set this up like this. Let's turn that off.
And so the pulse width actually control changes over time. Which means you don't have to constantly adjust it there. I tend to use this on the LFO option most. And I just set it to a very slow rate. All right, let's get into the filter. There are two filters in here. There's a, it's kind of a standard um, high pass filter. And, and a low pass filter, which has a resonance control. If you look on the spectrum analyzer, there's a, a peak there that comes up. And it really screams. <laughs> it was pretty cool. And so I'm going to control this with the envelope. and also add in a little bit of modulation. And put it on uh, triangle mode. Now if we want velocity and volume to be adjusted um, automatically, we have these sliders here, velocity envelope, and volume, uh, velocity to volume. And so when that turned up, it's going to be more velocity sensitive. I kind of like these around the middle. Uh, these other sliders are for controlling the filter and the uh, the pitch through the uh, pitch bend wheel. Pitch bend wheel on my keyboard's broken right now, so I can't show you that. Uh, but yeah, that's what that does. In the master section, we have level tuning and the octave. Simple level control. Uh, pitch bend range of two notes and shifting everything up and down one octave. The amplifier can be set to gate, so basically us on and off, hard on and off, or through the envelope. And this envelope is shared with VCF, so just keep that in mind. It's the same envelope shape. But it's not really a limitation because most of the time that sounds really great. That brings us to the arpeggiator. Turn it on, sync it to your project. Um, there's different modes here with the slider, normal, and some hidden ones here, up and down two, for example. Choosing how many octaves this range is, and then the tempo. All right, so that's uh, pretty much everything I have to say about the Juno LX. Try it out. It costs $60. You can get it from pluginboutique.com. There's a link in the description that will help out the channel if you're interested in buying this or any other plugin that they have available. This company also has many free plugins. You've probably tried them out yourself before or seen them online. They have a, uh, a chorus, and this is just the chorus section from this plugin, and sounds fantastic on guitars and uh, other synths. So it could also be really good if you want to, let's say, add in a distortion first and then have your chorus um, after the distortion. This plugin takes effects really well. Reverb, chorus, uh, distortion, things like that are all really common uses for on this. So yeah, one of my favorite new plugins and um, highly recommend it. I think it's well worth the $60. There are a couple bugs that I did find, um, but uh, 
talking to the developer that seemed to be uh, very interested in fixing those problems. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Thank you.